get me some of her jewelry, something to hold. I didn't expect to come face to face with the husband. He came out and he took one look at me and said, oh, you must be the psychic that they've got working. Since I'm very good at seeing through people, I could see through him and he was terrified. And I, I remember thinking it was kind of funny because I didn't know who was more terrified of who. He told me that we'd never find her because she was too deep. And I looked at him, I looked him in the eyes, and he blind to me. And he was doing a lot of things to block me, like he'd get really close to me. And it was stressing me out and upsetting me. And so I couldn't pick anything up because he was scaring me. Because he didn't want us to find her. He didn't help with the search party. Nothing. He was very cocky and arrogant. They had a big van set up with maps all over the side. So we got yellow highlighters and we started highlighting all the places that fit my description. I went out with the search party, trampling through bushes and going through all the places that seemed to fit. So after we searched a couple of places and we didn't find her where I thought we were going to find her, I started getting discouraged. But I was really determined that we were going to find her that day. I mean, I was really determined that the family was going to, the suffering was going to stop. Because it just wasn't fair. I mean, they were just, they were dying inside. And then I decided to go on home. And it was maybe uh, two hours later I got a phone call. And they said we found her. They had found her on a deserted road up in the hills. She was less than 100 yards from the road. And she had been dumped down this ravine. That's what he was saying, why she's too deep, because she was 30 feet down. The autopsy report showed that she was killed by the blunt blows in the back of the head. She was brutalized horribly, and I didn't know any of that. I didn't think of any of that type of blue, thank God, because she was stabbed like 50 times when she was beheaded. When they found her down in the ravine, they also found her next to the body of the goat. The boyfriend and the girlfriend were into Satanism, and she was actually a human sacrifice for his birthday. And I don't think anything's ever stood me so bad as dealing with him, because that's the first time I've ever faced evil, I mean, from face to face with darkness. So I think she died before all of the trauma, and I was able to tell that to her family. I was really able to talk to them on a spiritual level. It was a, a flood of all kinds of emotions. That time was tough for for me and my husband because he kind of scoffed at it and made fun of it and didn't believe a lot of what I was saying. And when we found that missing woman, that was kind of a turning point for him. He was going, okay. <laughs> found someone. <laughs> I mean, within a week, I was working on another case. So I felt pretty much like, okay, <laughs> here we go. I guess this is, this is what we're going to do. Another family heard about my involvement. Their daughter had been killed. Her name was Gloria de la Cruz. She was a mariachi singer. She was 18 years old. She had gone to bed one night and kissed her mom the night and the next morning she was gone. She had been dumped in a dumpster in Los Angeles. And again, I went and got hypnotized. I got a name. I got a license plate, a car, the personality of the guy, why he did it, how he did it, what route he took her on. I knew the whole scenario. It was like watching the whole thing take place. And they finally did make an arrest. I had said his name was Rosengren. His name was Robinson. He drove the car that I had said. Certain aspects of his personality were right on, I mean, right on the money. He confessed behind closed doors and told the detectives that he drove down PCH exactly the way I had said. And at that point, I was going, wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, I was amazed. So my life was all of a sudden spiraling out of control. Here I was, this mom with two kids, and all of a sudden people were calling me and asking me to do this. It was mind-boggling. 
for me, I'm my husband. We would be out doing something with the family, and I would just burst into tears. He'd be going, what? You don't like your taco? Or something. You know, I had no idea the emotional impact of what I had been through. He couldn't keep up with the changes. And uh, I was just becoming a completely different person than I was just a few years ago. I mean, a completely different person. I saw the world differently. I saw everything differently. He was the kind of person who, who hates change. He likes things to stay the same. I felt kind of alone because he didn't understand. Ultimately, we split up. We've been 